everyone, and welcome to this live workshop where we are going to be painting a cheap store-bought latex mask so that way you guys can use them for your animatronics projects. As you can guess, this live workshop is going to involve a lot of paint drying. Nothing but the best action for you guys. So I have two examples right here, and I thought this one would be kind of cool to use as an animatronic because he's got a mouth that we can articulate. You can cut out the eyeballs and then put in your own mechanized eyes. How do we actually paint something like this? Unfortunately, you can't just take acrylic paint and dab it on because of the articulation. The second that your animatronic starts to talk, anywhere that you have folding and bending, well, that acrylic paint is just gonna flake off. It's gonna crack and peel. Even if you do good prep work, it might last a little longer, but eventually it is gonna crack and peel. Painting always starts with the boring stuff. In preparing your mask, when it comes out of the factory, you're gonna notice that it's either got like a, a powdery or a shine to it. Even if it doesn't look like it has a shine, it did get sprayed with a sealer of some sort. And remember that these are kind of flimsy, so you wanna be kind of careful with your prep. So the first thing you wanna do is get that sealer off. I have stuffed him with some paper just to kind of keep his form. And I start by scuffing him up with a scuff pad. You can use a magic eraser, which is used to remove paint and scuffs from the wall. It's really great. Or any like 200-ish grit sandpaper. You don't want to be too aggressive with your grit because you're gonna end up putting scratches in your mask and you're gonna notice it when you paint it. It might not be so noticeable at first, but then you're gonna see these gouges. Also, you do wanna be kind of careful, not go totally He-Man because this is rather thin. Many of you guys recognize this guy. He is the creature from the Black Lagoon. I thought it would be fun to do a classic movie monster. I scuffed this guy all up so he is ready to go. After you're scuffing, take him to the kitchen sink, give him a good soap and water situation there. Give him a good scrub-a-dub-dub, -dub, let him dry. But then after that, you want to wipe him down with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you're working with a latex mask that is unpainted, this helps to kind of expose or enlarge the pores of your foam to accept and grab down to that paint. It's a little more difficult with a store-bought mask because unfortunately, it's been pre-painted. And of course, I told you guys to use 99% and here I am using 91%. Look at how full this is. And I felt, man, to buy 99% when I have this one that is perfectly full, we're gonna stick with the 91% for now and, and see how that does. So for strategy, the most common way to do this for hobbyists is your 50-50 mix of liquid latex and acrylic paint. Now, what is liquid latex? This is stuff that you can pick up at any costume store, especially during Halloween. It's a milky type of liquid, a little bit thicker than milk, that you can dab onto your skin. You create wounds and scars and, and all kinds of like creepy stuff that you can then bloody up. And it adheres really well. And liquid latex, latex mask, latex likes latex, you know? So they're gonna be the best of friends. And you mix 50% acrylic paint. So this 50-50 mix will adhere to your mask really well. It's going to have that flex that you need. Now, a variation on this is using a third mask making latex. This is a little bit different. This is thicker. This is latex that also comes in liquid form. It usually comes in larger containers and it's for actually making masks. You can pick this up online. You mix that with a third of plain old indoor latex paint from the home improvement store. And then you want to mix that with a third of water because you're working with thicker materials here. The next one is your 50-50 mix of prosate and acrylic paint. So prosate is a medical adhesive and it's mostly used for adhering appliances to actors' faces. So all of those like wrinkles and like cool alien pieces that they put on the face. Prosate is more expensive. I say you start with the 50-50 mix, experiment, and then see how far you can back away that prosate. 
maybe like a 35, you know, mix or a 3070 mix and see how well it performs. The next one is kind of like an old, been around for a long time. And that is your mix of rubber cement, oil paint, and a solvent like naphtha. The rubber cement is really what's going to adhere to this mask. Rubber cement is also flexible. You don't want to use anything water-based in this mixture right here. And then you want to thin that down with your solvent because it does get like that rubber cement is gooey and it's just like putting a whole bunch of goo onto your mask. So start with this mix and then start experimenting. It does have a main drawback in that it is nasty, nasty stuff. It is toxic. So you definitely want to wear gloves when you are handling the solvent. You want to work in a well-ventilated environment because it, it is just nasty. So it's one of the reasons why I've kind of never done that method. Also, with the Prosade and the rubber cement, you're going to end up with kind of a sticky surface. And there's a couple different ways to fix that. When you're using Prosade, they have a non-tack formula. So that's going to reduce the stickiness and the rubber cement. You're definitely going to get a stick. So one fix for that is to either use a sealer or use some clear powder that you can find at the makeup section. And you may have to reapply the powder from time to time. Then if you just don't want to bother with mixing anything, these are all companies that make ready to go latex mask paints before you get started. Just to get your consistency right, you definitely want to do a test area. One way to do it is turn your mask, scuff it, and use your isopropyl alcohol, and then test on the inside of your mask. Or you can do like me and just go for it. Bam! I just tested it right there. I fold it, and I fold it this way, and no cracking. So it can really withstand it pretty well. And look, I can even stretch it and it doesn't crack. If you're going to use this as an animatronic, go ahead and cut out its eyes and a slit for its mouth if it doesn't have one. Or you can do it later, but then you're going to get the latex showing where you're going to have to touch up. So it's really up to you. Normally, the way I would do it, I have my little girl here. She's got an extra long neck, but you can get some wig head forms that have even longer necks. He doesn't want to go on. He's like, please don't, just don't. It's like, it's okay. He's the one that's going to get painted. You're just like, you got the easy part. In order to paint this, you can see he's like totally floppy here. So you want to take some packing paper, newspaper, magazines, whatever, and stuff him. So you want him to be pretty rigid and ready to paint. Latex will mess up your brushes, unfortunately. So you want to keep cleaning them to salvage them. All right, so I'm kind of memorizing what that looks like. And then I'm going to try and add 50% of this paint. Now, if you use a really cheapy, cheap, 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 cheap paint, like when you open it and you hear the birds, cheap, 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 cheap. One of the problems you may run into is you can already see that this is kind of a milky looking substance. Liquid latex will dry clear, mostly clear, mostly transparent. So although your mixture may look a little bit uh, milky, you kind of have to try and judge. So I'm going to add a little bit more, more brown. So that looks like a nice fudge for a brownie. Delicious. <laughs> So you can get pretty good coverage and it'll dry mostly true to color. Sometimes it will look darker when it dries because all of a sudden that milkiness goes away. This will probably need at least two coats of this base. By using a sponge, you can get rid of a lot of these paint strokes and you can use a hair dryer to kind of help speed up the drying process once you're done putting on your base. And you don't want to like super goop it because you don't want to eliminate the details, the little details that your mask has. See all these paint marks? I'm just going to kind of blend. With latex, you can create texture. You can do this with a sponge. You can use a finer sponge where it's not so popcorn-y. It gives you a smoother appearance. Or if your creature is hairy like the horse, you may want some brush strokes to kind of mimic the hair. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Like I can touch it now. It's tacky, but I can touch it. 
We're gonna move through these steps and these layers a little bit faster than what we should. This should definitely dry out a little bit more, but at least you guys will get a good overview of the different layering steps, a couple dry brushing techniques. And if he needs a third coat, you can hit him up with a third coat. But as for me, I'm gonna stick with just the two coats and then move on so we can kind of see other things. And the more latex you use, the more texture you can kind of add to your masterpiece. Other than prepping your piece, this is like the other longest part because you gotta let it dry. Sometimes it's best to come back to it a couple hours later or even the next day rather than the way I'm doing it, which is like speed paint. When you use a heavy latex mix, you definitely want to be sure to go over your mask and make sure you don't have like giant like puddles or anything like that, because then it'll dry that way. And so you'll lose the detail in your mask. So that's the only thing about going super thick with your latex is that it can obliterate some of the non-detail <laughs> that your mask has. Well, depending. Maybe if you've got a great mask with great details. This one actually, as much as like I make fun of it, is not that bad. All right. So I think that's good for a second pass. This was a black and white film. And so you see some color photos. Some of them are set photos. Others are fans that have colored the black and white photos or screenshots. You could take this any way you want. You can kind of swing it towards an alien. I'm sure you can swing this towards some kind of bird man if you wanted to by adding some feathers on the sides. So you can take your store-bought mask anywhere you want. I'm going to move him towards the more traditional creature from the Black Lagoon, but just give them more contrast. These masks tend to have not much contrast, you know, very, very, very basic. I try to do less liquid latex now and more paint. So I'm going to take that same spatula. And every time you want to mix a new batch, you definitely want to use a new cup because that latex will dry up in here. And when you mix a new batch, you're going to be peeling latex off the walls and painting with like hardened latex. Look at how light that red looks. It looks a little scary, but it should dry darker. So expect that. And that's why sometimes it's good to test a couple areas. See how it dries on your mask. And this is just base coating for now. We're just kind of mocking up our areas. So I know this looks like really bad right now, but I promise, I think I can make it look good. I'm going to base out some red here. Now he's beginning to look like an ape. We have taken him in the direction of an ape. So I find after a good base coat of 50-50, you can start backing off the latex portion of your mixture. We have a nice brown base. And the biggest reason we painted him brown, looking like a big chocolate, is that in these crevices, we want them to be dark. But see how it starts to now pick up the high spots? And this is going to start moving in the green direction. So he looks more like a dirty creature from the Black Lagoon. Because it is swampy where he lives, right? And one of the reasons why it gets so dark is that the brown is indeed a bit wetter than what we want to paint. So it mixes a little bit. I kind of like that because it blends the colors together so you don't get like an obvious green on top. Hopefully we can take this thing from very scary looking to something you know, better than what we had before. You can see how brown this is and how this is beginning to change with some green highlights here. And I'm not using full paint, it's just, but I'm not dry brushing either. I just give it a good swipe on each side and then go for it, especially because the brown is still kind of wet. You can get away with, you know, not fully dry brushing. And I know the red looks hideous, but I have an idea, I have a plan, which is very, rare. All right, guys. So I think we did a ton of damage today. So we're going to give them overnight to dry. And then we're going to start to blend this and create all the fine details to really bring out our creature. Welcome back to part two of our latex mask painting debacle. I kind of experimented with some colors. So I highlighted some of his warts, gave him a couple speckles and things. So you can continue working this to get it to the point you want. Let's see if we can get this side to more closely match this side. I'm kind of only going up to here. The sculpture is going this way. So I always want to paint for the highlights 
perpendicular to the sculpture. I don't want to follow it parallel because then you fill in all those really nice dark spots. But I'll probably go a little heavy just to kind of work our way through this side and not be up all night, right? We should do like pajama party painting. I'd be into that. This paint job is kind of like reminding me a little bit of the Lord of the Rings, but in paint job form. Like everything, you look at the original mask and you're like, you know, it looks pretty good. You know, it's like the hobbits in the Shire. Gandalf comes and he's like, you know, there is Sauron, he's back. Things are gonna get like worse and all that kind of stuff. But you're looking at your mask and you're like, you know, it doesn't look good, but he encourages you. Like it could be better, life could be better. So you're like, yeah, let's, let's gather up and do this repaint. Yeah, everybody. And like every quest story starts, it always starts off exciting. Everyone is happy, besties, all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how we started with our mask project. I got it scuffed, I got it alcoholed up, and the base coat went on pretty quick. And then we laid the green, and then the red went on. And that's the part of the story where the fellowship starts to fall apart. And you're like, uh-oh, I don't know if I made the right decision. Maybe I should have stayed at the Shire. You know, maybe we just should have left this mask alone because this thing looked like a baboon or worse. Now with my brush kind of dry, pretty dry, I'm beginning to kind of get into this red area a little bit more. And how much latex you use, there are certain areas of the mask, if you know it's not going to be articulating, you don't have to go so crazy with the latex. You can use a lesser ratio. This is called light olive green. And you don't want to exactly dry brush, but you don't want a super loaded brush anyways. It might be a little frightening, like, oh, wow, that's like really bright, but it will dry darker, especially because we are painting with the previous layer a little bit wet. I think we're good to move on to the yellow. I actually added yellow because of this speed painting situation, just to brighten it up kind of artificially. You can really start seeing, it's like, wow, that's too, that's too much, right? But let's see if it darkens up because we are painting wet. He's looking more creature from the Black Lagoon and less like baboonish. Hopefully. And soon we're going to start to back our latex off even more until we're pretty much using none for the fine, fine detail. And of course, where we're using none, these are areas that are not going to be critical to the articulation. I think that's enough for the yellow. Let's start putting in the white. And if you take your time, you can really go in and with a flat edge brush, you can sit there and fill in and highlight. But even with very basic uh, painting skills, using the sculpture of your mask, you can start creating highlights rather easily. Here I'm going to use less latex, maybe a 30%. So I say, let's see if I'm, I'm able to do that. Uh, that's more like 40%. I'm going to start on these fins right here. And on the very edges of the fin fins, I do use pure white just to really like frost them. I'm trying to keep the white more towards the tips rather than taking it all the way up. Sometimes I do get a little excitable and the white goes where it shouldn't go. So I'm trying to hammer this ridge really well, just the ridge. So it stands out from this dark area here. It's looking very white, but it is going to dry and dull out. So we'll come back to that and hit it up with the real white. And I don't want to take the white all the way. We just want to hit the frost up the tips. Very, very 90s style. Let's see if we can start blending this situation. Ooh, not like that <laughs> together. Ooh, not like that either. I know like when the brush is fresh, it's gonna come in hot. So let's see where we can hit it, where it's not gonna be so noticeable. Maybe here. Where we do want it to be pretty white. So here's a good choice. And then as the paint kind of unloads, you can start getting a little braver and start going in here because there's a lot less paint on the brush. 
Now I'm going to go in with this red and start to blend this red a little bit. And as my brush is running out of white, now I'm just going to kind of really highlight those latex kind of splotchy areas that I created. So getting up in here, and oftentimes I like to do this with a much bigger brush. It leaves a lot less streaks. So the bigger the surface area you're trying to do, increase the size of your brush. The white speckles, it's just hitting the tops of the texture that we created. And a much bigger brush is going to give you more control. And you can move back and forth. If it starts to get like really white, like this got a little too white for me. So I would probably go back with some of the darker green and kind of hit up some of the areas, add back some of that darker color. Here's a happy little wart. We're going to start to give it little wart friends. Can't have just one. Could have multiple. It's like a wart party. The mask is not helping us out at all because there's no real texture on this. So you kind of have to add your own. The good news is that most of this probably like this would be cut out anyways. So I'm just kind of painting because we're not going to be cutting ours out. So I might as well have some here. If your project starts to get too white without any latex, go ahead and take your dark base coat again and water it down until you get like a, at least a skim milk consistency, like an ink skim milk consistency and take a chip brush or a large brush like this and brush your entire piece with this very dark mucky water. And what that does is that it fills in not just the crevices, but all the little texture divots in here and helps bring your piece a little bit more manageable in terms of the white. And then if you wash it and then it turns out too dark and you're like, oh no, I ruined it. You can take your light color and just give it another, another highlight and you're good to go. You can go in forward and reverse, which is the nice thing with these paint jobs. I encourage you guys to try it out because it's just paint. You can always go back and repaint if you don't like what you came up with. But I always like to experiment because sometimes the weirdest combinations or the weirdest techniques, like I was kind of scared to do this, this lip thing, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to practice it. So this will be good practice. All right. So we have like a nice white situation going on. I think we got things mostly matched up. It is mostly matched up. It's, it's pretty there. So as a final step, is try our ink wash for you guys to kind of see what that is. And I'm going to mostly concentrate this on his face because this is the area where I thought just became a little too white. Now, this is an older paint, hence the chunkification. It's best to actually do this with him upright because that's how the grime would normally fall. But for these purposes, we're kind of stuck with him in this position. And you might need to do a couple different layers of this because by the time it dries, it is so like this thing is so watery that it's going to leave a very faint dark inside the pores of the latex that we created, the latex pattern or the latex texture that we created. And that's looking a lot better. See how it's not so like white. You can actually distinguish the eyes, which are indeed white versus the face. So in order to kind of speed things up, I'm going to dab him a little bit. See, he looks like real brown and it looks like, oh, he's going to dry this way, but he won't. The translucency of the water will, the high spots are all going to dry closer to the color that you painted, but all those little miniature microscopic divots are going to have that darker paint pooling inside. So sometimes this does take, you know, two, three applications, but I'm just going to start to kind of dab what's sitting on top and allow what's sitting in the crevices to work its magic. So that's already helped out a ton. It probably needs another application or so. You can buy these really cool, almost their masks, and one could argue that I made it better or I made it worse. 
I gave you a whole bunch of options. Hopefully, as you guys try those options, definitely post back and let me know how it worked for you. Did you find that perfect ratio with regular paintbrush, sponges? You can get a whole bunch of effects, even if you're not like this big detailed artist. Use the sculpture features that are already on the mask and just highlight them. I don't know. What do you think? She ruined me. Save me. Get me out of here. <laughs> Not so fast. Uh, you see my, my collection over there? Oh yeah, of misfit toys. You are going to join them on the shelf. I hope you guys got a great idea of how to start off with the latex. Back it off as we move through the layers. These are shot live. So yes, we do things a little bit different to push along the project so I can show you as much as I can. But Inevitably, there are times where I forgot to mention something or I'm like, man, I should have demonstrated a technique. There is always a link for a fuller tutorial down below. I invite you to join our community where you can watch these live and you can also participate in our community build sessions where we get together via Zoom and build real animatronics and kind of help each other through our projects. So I hope to see you guys there. Link for that is below too. Hope you had a great night. I'm out of here. Time to join your friends. No.